Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship at John Knox Presbyterian Church. We're happy you're here. We're happy you're uh, watching us on Facebook Live or on YouTube later. It's important to stay connected. Uh, we are still in the season of Lent, um, which means that Easter is coming. Next week, we'll have all of our Holy Week uh, services announced. Uh, but Pastor Randy still has a basket full of little books and pencils that you can take on the way out. Um, it's just another reminder every day of Lent what to be grateful for. Um, a great way to be thinking and be blessed and to prepare your heart for Easter. Also, um, during Lent, we always do the one great hour of sharing. So I have fish banks available for all ages, not just for kids. And money goes to help um, Presbytery with the hunger program, disaster program, as well as just for sustainability. And we also have, are having a special offering for the Ukraine, which goes to the Presbyterian Disaster um, Committee. Assistance, thank you. That'll go directly to Ukraine. So if you'd like to do a donation for that, you can write a check with Ukraine in the bottom memo, and that money will go right to Presbytery to help um, Ukraine. They, uh, the whole country is in our prayers. Wanted to mention adult education class is still happening in person at 11 or on Zoom, so check it out. I'll have the link in the comment section. Um, Swell is already getting ready with a new luncheon in April, so you need to double check on that as well. And I think that might be it. Otherwise, check out different ways that you can help out, whether it's um, in serving coffee, preparing coffee. We need more help in the audio video booth, um, which is a great thing. Hi, oh, hi, Andrew. He says, Andrew says, help. He's, I think he's, he's drowning. <laughs> yeah, he's not, he's not waving. He's drowning back there. So please help Jerry and Andrew and the team that make all of our audio, our video, and streaming out to everyone out there possible. It's a great way, and it's actually kind of fun, too. So, but now, let us prepare our hearts for worship. May God have something special to say to each and every one of you. Oh, it's so good to see you. I, you know, I always feel like, have anybody ever remember Romper Room? 
okay, okay, maybe you don't, but there's a, there's a little, there's a, yeah, there's a lady that would hold a mirror and she'd say, and I can see Billy and Joey and Sarah and Rebecca, and that's kind of how I feel like on this. I'm, I can see Diane, I can see Sherry, I can see Lucinda, maybe not, I can't, but that's what she would say. I always think of that when we're up here. Hey, I don't know about you, I feel like I kind of got used to the time change, you know, I, you know, I'm getting up now. And did you know they're talking about making it permanent? That means, I, yeah, like it's going to make it permanent, which means we never get to have that extra hour of sleep again. It's like, yeah, I mean, like when I was, when I went, you know, I told you about it, I went around the world. I went around the world. I had two June 13ths. Because I went, when I went around the world, we went past the International Day, and I had June 13th. Now, so I got an extra day of life. Isn't that amazing? I never have to give it up. It's kind of cool. So, but, but today we are celebrating, we are celebrating God in our lives. We're celebrating the chance that we have to be together. Um, I don't know if you saw the uh, meditation thing that we had up here. Jerry, if you can show it again. One in a million. Now, as I thought about that, it has like two different meanings. Now, I don't know if you notice this. You see, you can't quite see it well because the contrast isn't as clear. But it's a black and white photo of people, actually Jews, in the Holocaust. And in the middle is a girl with a red coat. One of a million. Unique. This actually uh, is from a picture of Schindler's List. If you haven't seen that movie, um, I, I would suggest that you do, do, do watch it, but bring Kleenex with you. Um, but one in a million. Unique. We are all one in a million. You know, Psalm 8, which I'm going to read later, is, talks about us, how, how, how amazing is God is mindful of us as humankind, one in a million. But it has another meaning. We are only one in a million. You know, there's, there's a plethora of other people around us. And I think we, I don't know about you, but I kind of vacillate in that spectrum between unique and wanting to hear from God and, and, and having a sense that I'm important and then also being reminded that I'm just one person out of, is it 7 billion now? I think it's 7 billion now. And, and so there's a certain amount of, of responsibility and, and it makes me a little, uh, gives me a sense of, more sobriety about the fact that, yeah, I'm unique and I'm special, but, but I'm not the only one. And so we're going to talk today a little bit about the, the Pharisee and the tax collector and, and kind of their, their view of life and their view of their connection with God, um, how that's important. But we, today we celebrate. Today we are here to celebrate God in our lives. And so I wanted to read you Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my God, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Please pray with me. Most holy God, we are here to celebrate you. We know that you don't just stay in this one place, that you walk with us every place we go. But today, we think of you being in this house. And we are here to praise you, to give thanks, to be grateful, to, to have a sense of, of your presence in our lives. So help us be attuned to your spirit. Help us to be aware of how your spirit speaks to us, calling us who we are, who we need to become, what we need to do, and yet mostly, that we are your children. We are not just one of a million. <laughs> we are precious in your sight. Help us to recognize that, acknowledge it, and give you praise for that. In your son's name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Let's stand together this morning. Ask God to open our eyes, open our spirits. Give us peace, strength, listen to God's word. Here we go. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you.
sing a song that's the setting of the, the Beatitudes, um, you know, and today's scripture really kind of sets that up really well, because, uh, you know, like, lots of times in our society, life is about power, it's about ambition, it's about intelligence, it's about wealth, and uh, Jesus turned the world upside down when he wrote, spoke, I guess he didn't write them, he spoke them, uh, when he spoke the Beatitudes, because he didn't talk about power and ambition, and those things, he talked about humility, and he talked about mourning. And he talked about hunger for justice and mercy. And those are the things that God wants in our lives. Blessed are the humble. One, two, three, and... Blessed are the humble in spirit. This is the kingdom of heaven, and blessed are the mourners, they will find comfort, and blessed are the lowly, and they shall reign.
and blessed are those who hunger who thirst for justice and surely you'll file them completely and those who show mercy will be shown mercy the pure hearts will see God will see God Blessed are peacemakers called the sons of God. Blessed are those oppressed for righteousness. Sake for there shall be, shall always be. Yes, there shall be heaven. sit, you may be seated, please. So, we have a special uh, time today where we are receiving two new members to our congregation. So, Joy and Shanna and Josh, you can come up too. Have the whole family come on up. This morning, our session met with Joy and Shanna. And Josh was there too. Um, they, uh, as well, you know, as I read Psalm 84, why don't you come on up and you can turn around and face these folks. Um, if you want to take your mask off, you can. I'll leave that up to you. Um, but I read in here about even the sparrow has found a home, a swallow, a nest for herself where she may have her young. And what's interesting about the story, well, these two is, and, and you can talk with them later uh, to get a little bit more details, but the first time, I guess it was the first time you came in December, they actually, they actually were in New Jersey and then moved to California, they moved to Foster City, and then they moved to Pleasanton. But the church they had back there, which both Josh and Joy were baptized in, uh, they had the song back there sung by Philip Phillips called Home. Well, the first time they came here, we had that same song. And they felt a sense of home. And they have come off and on since that time in December and really have sensed uh, uh, kind of a, uh, the same vibe that they had back there in that small congregation back there in New Jersey and have really um, enjoyed being here and getting to know some people and hopefully you'll get to know them better. But um, we decided to make it official, making you members. But before they become members, I have to answer three questions and we have one for the congregation. So I'm going to ask you these questions now. And they're not difficult, but here you go. Do you affirm Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? If so, please say, I do. Do you renounce evil and affirm your reliance on God's grace to guide you in this world? If so, please say, I do. Will you participate actively and responsibly in the worship and mission of the church? If so, please say, I will. Yeah, that was a little different, but you guys got it. Good job. Congregation, these folks want to be a part of our congregation here. That means that you need to embrace them. You need to find ways that you can connect with them. You need to envelop them. Let them know that they are part of our, our, our family here in this place. And so you, will you embrace these new members and encourage them 
in their walk of faith. If so, please say we will. Nice. Okay, now live that out. Okay. So let me pray for these, these three being here. And then we'll go ahead and have a passing the peace so you can greet each other as well as them. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for those times that uh, we again have added to the, the congregation here. And, and we know that there are more people that have been come part of this congregation, but these are, are taking a step to uh, call them, to admit that they want to be members. They want to be counted here. And so we thank you for their courage, for their, their desire, for their resilience. And so I pray you'll continue to bless them in their walk, that you'll help us as we find ways to assimilate them into our congregation, whether it be through activities or through uh, Bible studies or through uh, different types of events. Uh, Lord, we are thankful that they have chosen us to be a part of. And we're thankful that you have chosen us as well to continue this ministry in this community. So Lord, we pray that you'll guide us, you direct us, and you'll bring us a sense of your grace and your peace in our lives as we serve you. In your son's name, amen. And now, please stand up. Let us pass the peace of Christ. Peace to you. Peace to you. Christ, man. Calling all kids. I know there's a few more kids out there. Ready? I always hate to end the passing the peace time. It's such a nice time to visit. If there's any more kids that want to come on up, we'll do the kids message. Is it a kid's message? All right. All right. Today is kind of fun because we all get to play a game. We play lots of games in Sunday school. We'll always have a little lesson to them. And at Rock in the Afternoon, we've been playing this one game, a memory game. And I thought, kids, do you want to show the adults what we do sometimes in Sunday school for some of our games? Yeah? Yeah. You know what? So what we're going to do is we can dim the lights. We're going to play a memory game. So we're going to look at 10 items. Don't show it yet, Jerry. We're going to look at 10 items on the screen. Same, same things on both screens. And you at home can play too. And I want you to kind of study those items, memorize them. And then we're going to close our eyes. And then Jerry's going to put another picture up. And two of the items will not be there that were originally there. Can you tell which ones are missing? We'll find out. If you know, just raise your hand. Don't yell it out, okay? Everyone's going to do a different speed. So first of all, we'll do about 20 seconds looking at this first. This is, this is stuff from my uh, kitchen drawer. Here we go. Seriously, seriously from my kitchen drawer. Can you see it okay, everyone? Okay, so just study it. I can tell you some things where you're not sure. St. Patrick's Day necklace. There's a rock, a cross. There's a, a lock. There's, oh, there's Pez from last Easter. I found that. There's a green pencil, soccer ball. Oh, look at that. There's Jesus on a donkey for Palm Sunday. A happy face and a domino. Oh, it's a cute little finger guy. He's really cute. All right, so take a look at that. About 10 more seconds. There is a rock. There is. Okay. Now, everyone, everywhere, close your eyes for five seconds. 
and Jerry's going to switch the picture. And Jerry. Here he goes. Okay, open your eyes. Which two items are missing? Oh, pom- okay, Amy's got the best memory. I'm being honest. She always gets to be in all the memory games. He knows. Everybody else? Anybody else have it? Okay, see, you know both of them? Hold on. Okay, I see Sandy Call. Anyone from choir? Are you getting there? All right. So, A.V., what is one of the items that had disappeared? The rock. The rock you talked about. All right. And how about anyone else know what the second one was? Yes. Panlu. Domino. Is that correct? That's right. Very good. Okay, let's go back to number one. So, what? The number. Oh, okay. I did that. I created that little number one. Okay. All right. So, now we're back to number one. We're going to do this two more times. So, take a look. Ten seconds. I'm going to keep everything in the same position. All right, and close your eyes. Everyone, I see you peeking. Bob Eby, close your eyes. Okay, and where's picture number three, Jerry? And open your eyes. <gasps> A different two items are missing. Oh, John knows one. Oh, no, don't see it, don't see it. Oh. <laughs> no helping Dean. Okay, what, what was one of them, John? Pencil. And who knows the next one? What's, what was missing this time? Anyone from, anyone from the qual? Oh, Peter. The lock. Very good. That was Becky's lock in middle school. Okay, awesome. One last time. Okay, back to picture number one. This time, just five seconds. All right. Close your eyes. And now, Jerry, picture number four. And open. Oh, hold on. That's someone that's different. Yeah. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Everybody out there getting them? Terry Hahn. You're, oh, my gosh. She's, like, really thinking about this. Okay. All right. Yes, Lily. The, uh, shamrock. the shamrock necklace. Awesome. And there's one more. Yes, Miss Sandy. The soccer ball. That, that was actually from Becky's trophy when Terry Hahn was a coach. So... <laughs> It fell apart. <laughs> okay, so the reason is, why are we playing this memory game? What could this have to do with a Bible lesson? <laughs> if you thought about it more, you probably think about it. Okay. Oh, remembering the one lost sheep. That's a good one. You, this is a good children's ministry director here. Yes, anyone else? It may be hard to memorize all 10 things where there are. Um, and especially when I took two away, but Jesus calls us to memorize two most important things. One time in the Bible, someone said to Jesus, what's the most important commandment? Whether he was thinking of the Ten Commandments or all the rules in the Bible in the Old Testament, and Jesus said, there's two most important commandments that sum everything up. Okay, wait, want to stand up? Will you say one of them? Say it real loud. One is? Love others. Awesome. Why don't you come on up? And Lily? Love God. Love God. There you go. It all sums up to that. Love God. Love others. And in fact, I always do this with the kids. It kind of goes. Um, in the Ten Commandments, the first four have to do with loving God. And number five, number ten, love others. So if we love God with all our mind, our heart, our strength, our mind, if we love our neighbor as ourselves, That's the most important thing to remember, okay? So we'll be learning a little bit more about that today and how God loves us all. But let's first say a prayer before Sunday school. Ready? Father God, thank you for giving us so many wonderful things in the world. But help us to remember the most important thing is to love God and is to love others. And everything else will fall under that. So Lord, help us to respect others' lives. Help us to help others. Um, and to put you first in all that we say and all that we do. And bless these kids today. And we all say a huge amen. There we go. All right. If you want to join us in Sunday school, you know where we'll be. Room G in middle school will be in room D. See what? I know. It's amazing. Oh.
flips your left. Versus 9 through 14. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Tell you, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me before I begin. Lord, it is by your mercy that we come to this place. It's by your mercy that we stand before you and before others. By your mercy, Lord Jesus, that we are enveloped by this community of faith to guide us, 
to strengthen us, to challenge us. Now, Lord, I pray that we will hear your spirit speak to us. Just as said each morning in our announcements, God has a message for each and every one of us. Help us, Lord, to hear that message. Help us to embrace it. Help us to be, help us to be one of a million that proclaim your name and all that we say and all that we do. And I ask the words of my mouth, the meditations of our heart, be acceptable to you. For you are a rock, you are our Redeemer. Amen. Well, we've been mentioning the fact that we have this class going on, and we've had six sessions so far. We have three more. Um, this class, they we're starting at session five, actually. It takes us about three sessions to do two, which is fine. That's, we want to get interaction. We want to have a chance to talk about it and so forth. So the next one is, the, is an accountant's favorite book in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. You know which, which book that is? What is it? Numbers. Numbers. Nice. <laughs> Although Peter says he can't wait till after April 15th to look at this book. But, but that's the one we're going to be looking at. Um, and, you know, what's interesting. When we think of the, you know, the names that we give the books of the Bible in English are different than the names when you translate them in Hebrew. Um, and so oftentimes, and actually some of them come from Latin, our English words sometimes come from Latin, uh, sometimes comes from um, something that happens in the book, like Exodus, uh, you know, that was the people fleeing, uh, for, fleeing Egypt, but actually the name translated in Hebrew for Exodus is names, because, because Israel was going to make a name for itself. Well, what's interesting about numbers is we think about that numbers because we think of there's so many times a census is taken, the counting. People are being counted, standing up and being counted in this book. And yet the translation of numbers is actually in the wilderness. In the wilderness, into the wilderness, the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, not because they gotten lost, but because they failed to trust God. They found, failed to stand up and be counted as one following God. And yet, as I mentioned this morning, we are one of a million. We are unique. And again, to underline that, I was going to go get my Bible, but it's over here. Psalm 8, I mentioned that this morning. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You've set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you've established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which have been set in place, what is humankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You made them a little lower than angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, all that swims in the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. His book ends with the phrase, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. But in the middle there, it talks about the uniqueness of creation. That's humankind. Last couple of weeks, I've actually been talking, well, a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned the term kingdom dwellers, people who recognize they are the beloved of God. Kingdom dwellers are those who acknowledge God is God, and they are not. Kingdom dwellers are those who long for justice, but also who exhibit compassion. Kingdom dwellers take on the responsibility to live out their life, not just for themselves, but for all creation. Each one accepts their calling to be a partner in the redemption of the world, this world. It is in this partnership that we have to maintain this dialogue with God, for God is continually guiding us on a daily basis, day after day. God's presence is with us, not just in this house, but every place that we walk. I believe God calls everyone to be in his kingdom. And not just in the life hereafter or in the future, but right now, in God's kingdom, right now. You know, we mentioned Luke 17, 21 a few weeks ago where Jesus said the kingdom of God is where? It is within you. 
Today's passage tells us of one more characteristic found in the, in the kingdom dweller, and that is humility. Now, in the parable we had last week, it's also a good example in regards to not being humble and being humble. We explored the contrast of that agnostic judge and the persistent widow. The judge who didn't care for God or human beings, didn't care about what they thought. And yet the widow was persistent in asking for justice. And in that parable, I want to remind you that I think the story was not as not only about the persistence in the widow, but it was about the fact that God is not like that judge. God has compassion in the midst of injustice, in the midst of people turning away. Those Israelites that turned away did not go as God directed them into the land of Canaan. After the spies came back and the 10 said, we could never take this land. Even God said, go into this land. And so they left that and wandered for 40 years. And yet God still was with them. God was not like that judge. And I shared you with a story, that short story about the Ukrainians. We saw a picture of it. Meeting the needs of a captured Russian 18-year-old soldier. Not only giving him food and drink, but connecting him with his mother. With a cell phone, so she could know that he was safe. A foe, a foreigner, someone who is trying to tear their life apart. They showed him compassion in the midst of that injustice. Today we look at two different people. One exalts himself before all those around him. And the other recognizes that he is, has nothing that he considered to be exalted. The one checks off all the boxes about his righteousness, what he does. He fasts. He ties. He does all these things. But he is a Pharisee. We must recognize that. And part of his role as a Pharisee is to follow those 613 laws that they came up with. To have strict adherence to those. That was his role. That was his calling. That, that was his example to the people of Israel. But is there any need of God in that example? The second person knows he'll never receive any type of praise from these people. He was a tax collector. And you remember what a tax collector was? It was a Jew. But it was one that was serving the Roman oppressive government. It was the one that collected taxes from his own people. And the way he, the way he earned his, his money was by skimming off the top. So he could charge whatever he wanted as long as he got the certain amount he needed to go to the Roman government. This man, how could he ever receive any type of encouragement or praise from his own people? He is not. The one... The Pharisee expects to be exalted right now. The other asks for mercy, and he is willing to wait. Most of us, I think, recognize that there's no way we can continue to do things to fill the bucket of redeeming works, tying us to really receive the forgiveness that we long for and that we need. We, as followers of Jesus, admit that we fall short. As Paul says in Romans 5, 23, everyone has fallen short. But we also must have a confidence that if we humbly accept any task God has given us, that no matter how we strive, no matter what we do, God will receive it in his mercy. We are not above anybody else. We are all counted and we are all needed. Each of us plays an important part, a vital part, to make this creation complete. But we also should be aware that it is only God who can bring it to completion. By the way, remember the word shalom. And I've shared this with you before, but shalom we think of as means peace, but also means completeness. It means fullness. It means almost perfection. And it's only God who can bring shalom into our lives. 
whatever task we have, which may seem overwhelming, if it's given by God, God will help us to accomplish it. I'm always amazed when we have our nominating committee that meets every, every year to select new elders and deacons uh, to ask candidates to become part of that leadership in our church, in our government, in our polity. And I'm always thinking, where are we going to find more people? <laughs> where are we going to find people to fulfill these roles? And I'm always surprised that those roles get filled. We find people that are willing to step up to be deacons, to be a symbol, a model of sympathy and concern and compassion. And we have those leaders who step up, who are willing to listen to each other, to use their wisdom, to help guide us, to help provide us with a vision to follow. No one person has a complete picture of where we're going or where God is leading us. I mean, I think of it as a kaleidoscope, always turning, always changing, yet brilliant in colors. And that's why we need each other. That's why we have a board of leadership, not just one or two, two people. But every year, people step up for those positions. And I believe every person on those boards does the best they can to fulfill the ministry God has given us. But back, back to our scripture. <laughs> Did the Pharisee fulfill his role God has given him? Is he truly a model of what it means to be a God follower, of being maybe even a kingdom dweller? He has position. He has power. He has prestige. But the problem with the parable, remember a parable is a story, a fictional story. But in that parable, he doesn't need God's mercy. He's done enough. He lists those things he's done, the means he's fulfilled his role. He has no need for God nor for any other thing else in his life. But the tax collector, the one who has no status, he stands before God, but not erect, but in humble submission, knowing that he's not all that he can be. He does not do all that he can do. He has an upward, he has an uphill climb. He knows that when God, but he also knows, I believe that God will accept his offering and that eventually reconciliation will come and it will be worth waiting for. Where do we stand on that spectrum? Checking off the things that we do that fulfill our role, our position as a Christian. And knowing that we can never do enough or be the person God calls us to be at that moment. We move between one and the other. But I think what's important for us in this parable that tells us, and we've talked about already and sung already, is the sense of humility. Of offering what we have, of what we can at this moment, at this time, and allowing God to do the rest. It is God that will bring the fullness. It is God that will bring the completeness. It is God that will help us to have peace. And someday we will hear that phrase that we long to hear well done, good and faithful servant. As you know, during this pandemic, I've had a, a calling to uh, serve uh, uh, various people, people that have no connection with this church or maybe even with any church and doing memorial services. And I've probably done 20 in the last couple of years. And most often when I do that service, when I'm involved in that service and I ask people what they would like to have in that service to, to celebrate that person's life, and to give them a sense of, of grace and peace, maybe even some of God's mercy. The psalm that comes up for us to read is Psalm 23. It's not Psalm 8, which talks about how grand we are in God's image, the one in a million. But it's a psalm that brings us a sense of comfort, a sense of, of, of peace, a, a sense of home 
as we mentioned this morning already. Psalm 23, to me, is a, is a psalm that we need to continue to use to remind us of who God is in our life and who we are in God's care. So today, that's what I want to end with. As we vacillate between these positions of strict adherence and humble servitude, this is what God longs for us to hear. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. This is a beautiful prayer written by um, Keith and Kristen Getty. We sing many of their songs and pray that it uh, speaks to you. It's a beautiful, humble prayer and that uh, we pray it together.
Thank you. <clears throat> well, part of our calling as a community of faith is to lift each other up, to share with each other. So we have a time now where we are going to ask if you have a prayer request or a praise that you'd like to share with us, that we may uh, pray with you. And uh, we have some microphones here. If you are willing or have something that you would be willing to share, uh, just raise your hand and we'll go ahead and bring you up, Mike. Hi, Sandy Call. Um, I have a few. So I was given a couple by Nancy and I have a couple of my own. Um, so one, you know Renee who works in the office, her husband Brandon, his mom is in the ICU. Don't know the reason why, but let's just pray for her that that be a wisdom for doctors and healing, whatever it may be. Um, also for Charlotte Hayes, who is not here today, she was in the hospital for two days because she had a gout attack. So she's finally home, but just prayers for her as she's recovering from that. Also, um, Sean Hensley, he grew up in this church. He's part of our Bible study, and Sean has been in, the, in and out of the hospital. Um, he's, at this point, the one infection they are treating is for mold that is in his lungs. So please pray for him. This is going to be a tough one. They're very thankful that they caught it at all. Um, also, um, Vicki Wyant, my sister, um, usually sings with us. Vicki's neighbor, Judy, this woman is having a really tough time. She's, what is she, late 60s, early 70s? Um, but she broke her ankle in three different places. And so she's in a severe amount of pain and then had a fall that she hurt her knee. And she's just, I met her the other day, I've been praying for her for the last couple of months, and met her the other day. And she's just, she's struggling spiritually, emotionally, physically. I mean, every which way. So just prayers for Judy as well. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks for sharing that. I'm Judy Spruitt, and I'd like you to pray for my son, Dennis. Um, February 20th, uh, he had a massive stroke. He had just turned 65, and he's um, in rehab at Kaiser in Vallejo. They're working him really hard, and he's progressing every day, but it's going to be a long, long haul. Thanks, Judy. Yeah. Look over here. Just a second, Pete. Chet's making the 50-yard dash for you. Oh, man. Uh, Pete Peterson, I know a lot of you are praying for my wife, Carol. Uh, she's had a really, really rough past six months. Uh, they kind of got a handle on what her problem was. A lot of it was medications and overdoses, stuff like that. Uh, she's doing a whole lot better, a difference in night and day the past month or so. So uh, she wanted me to send her wishes, best wishes to all of you, and I thank all of you for your prayers. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. Sandy. That's okay. Um, also, I have a friend whose um, young adult son is having a really tough time, and there were concerns for suicide. Um, and I think we have a lot of young people in this world. Yeah, think about what these kids have gone through, going through the last couple of years. They've lost their peer groups because of schools not being in session and such. And, and it's just really hard. I think it's especially hard for young people. We're older. We understand that life goes on and it'll get better. We understand ebbs and flows. And I think young people have a really difficult time with that, and especially after what we've gone through with COVID. So just prayers for this young man and just prayers for our young people. That for their for their mental well being, as much as anything. Thank you. Dean, Dean has. Uh, just Dean wants to use his own go. mic. Um, uh, we welcomed a new member of our family uh, this week. Uh, Rosalina. <laughs> I'm so bad at stuff. 
Anyway, um, she's been with us for a couple years as a foster kid, and so adoption is official. Yes. Hey. She's three. So. She's three? Good. Four. Or Something. four. One of those. <laughs> she's, one of those. she's short. She's, she's so short. sweet. <laughs> okay. Good. Very happy. Good. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Well, we'll pray for these, um, and then we'll move into the Lord's Prayer. So please, uh, let us pray. Lord, we uh, come to you with gratitude that we can gather together to not only praise your name, but to share with you our concerns and our joys. Um, we are so thankful for Rosalina moving from being a foster child to being adopted, um, having a loving family now that cares for her and takes responsibility for her and will guide her. Um, thank you for, uh, for Dean's love for her. And I just pray that uh, you continue to watch over her, keep her safe as she grows. We are also grateful for the way um, Carol Peterson has been able to find uh, what was causing some issues for her and, and now she's uh, gathering her strength again and becoming back more herself. We are just so grateful for the, the healthcare workers that are able to, to figure out what was going on and to deal with her. Um, but we do ask for continued prayer for um, Sean, who's been having a, off and on these bouts with uh, lung concerns and now uh, this mold in his lung, which uh, I know they haven't been able to really identify, but uh, continue to give him strength. Uh, for Judy, this friend of Vicky's that, who's dealt with a, a broken ankle and, and issues with her knee, um, lift her up uh, physically, help her to be renewed. We think of Brandon's mom, Renee's husband's mom, who's in ICU. We think of the recovery for Charlotte Hayes, uh, that you'll continue to help her to uh, get back to health, to full health. I'm asked too that you be with um, Dennis in his long recovery, Judy's son, uh, recovering from a stroke and learning to speak and to talk and to walk again. Uh, continue and, and thank you uh, that uh, Judy is just continuing uh, praying for him. I pray too for Bob and Sharon Smith um, as Bob recovers from his, his ills and I think of Joe and Valerie Coakley, continue to pray for them. So they deal with their concerns. I also Stan, who has uh, had eye surgery this last Thursday and goes in for a consultation uh, for blurred vision in his other eye this Monday. His son's Todd, who's dealing with testicular cancer, and Scott, who's looking for a job. We ask that you also guide them and direct them. Lord, we uh, do, as Sandy has mentioned, we think of all those uh, the young people and, and people that are alone, perhaps, uh, because of this pandemic bout that we've had to deal with and uh, losing their, their contacts, their, their things that, the structure that they had to help them hold together, um, give them a vision of hope, uh, of, of your presence that uh, calls them forward. Uh, we know that uh, having gone through different valleys, that there is light at the end of the tunnel, there is uh, a plane that we can walk on, but I pray for those that are still struggling that uh, to find hope, um, to be able to bring that to them, whether it be through a person, be through something they read, something they hear, uh, perhaps just even your spirit speaking to them. So Lord, um, we just ask you to be with the, the growing young people that we have in our congregation and beyond who are just struggling through this time period. Lord, it is your grace that we depend on. It is your mercy, it is your shalom. I just pray, Lord, that we'll be continually open to your spirit's guidance, uh, your spirit's words to us. May we hear them. And may we not only hear them for ourselves, but may we share them with those around us. Lord, you called us together as a community. You called us each, one in a million, to be counted to have that relationship with you, but you also called us to be within a community to support, encourage, and challenge each other. So I pray, Lord, that we will not falter from fulfilling that expectation. And now we come together to pray that prayer which you taught your disciples so long ago, but still holds so much truth for today that begins, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Like the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So one of the things that's missing in the structure of our service so often is our opportunity to have offerings of having a plate passed. And so periodically, uh, we've been trying to acknowledge the fact that the blessings that come from God are, are, are need to be shared. As Dean sang in the song earlier today, we receive that blessing so we can also pass it on to the world around us. So today, we also are going to again sing the doxology, reminding ourselves that God not wants not just our financial giving and our talents and our gifts, but wants ourselves. I mean, that's all that the tax collector really could offer. Nothing else was acceptable within his group. It was himself that he offered. So let us stand now as we sing together the doxology. Praise God from We do need you now, though. I don't know. That's okay. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, let's, uh, let's remain standing for this song, and uh, we'll sing the song that reminds us. And, and it's called song's called you, you Have Called Me Higher, but it also talks about in the second part of it that you have called me deeper. And I think today, based on the message we're talking about, let's focus on how God, we can go deeper into God, not well, you can go both ways. You can go whatever way you want, but for me today, it's 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 deeper. One, two, three, four. Sorry, wrong, wrong sound. Here he comes. I could just sit, sing with me. I could just sit and wait for all your goodness, hope to feel your presence. I could just stay, I could just stay here I am and hope to feel you, hope to feel something again. I could hold on, I could hold on and who I am and never let you change me from the inside. I could get safe, I could be safe here in your arms and never leave, never let these walls come. But you have called me higher, you have called me deeper now. I could hold on. I could hold on. I could hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. I could be safe. I could be safe here in your arms and never leave. Never let these walls go. But you.
I will be yours, Lord. I will be yours for all my life. And I will be yours, Lord. I will be yours for all my life. And I will be yours, oh. I will be yours for all my life. So let your mercy. Let your mercy light the path Let's sing it to Cause you have called me higher You have called me deeper And I'll go where you will lead me, Lord Cause you have called me higher You have called me deeper And I'll go where you will lead me, Lord Cause you Infectious, but now go in peace. Have courage. Hold on to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. We're all rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit.